ko si Reyna Buntuyan at ito ang aking kwentong kalikasan. So my name is Maria Reyna Olavides Buntuyan and I'm the owner of the Hero Author Center. And I'm here today to share my story of my journey uh, from being a mountaineer to an entrepreneur. When I was a student in college, I was taking up development communication. I discovered uh, the sport. We called it a sport then, mountaineering on my last years of college. And uh, from a development communication direction of my career path, when I discovered mountaineering, I decided to shift into full-time being a mountaineer. Uh, I think it was an accidental discovery. I never realized that I would tremendously love the outdoors. When I discovered mountaineering, I never stopped climbing. Like in a month, we would climb three, four, five times in a month. And uh, we would climb several mountains in Bukidnon area. And eventually we discovered other mountains in other places, in regions. I remember also we had difficulties or challenges with local communities, not very open to outsiders. Um, I was not very conscious of the sensitive the cultural practices and traditions. Sometimes it would just pass the you know the the area of the house of the houses. La bay my buntag, you know. Sometimes we do that, but little did we you know that there has to be a proper way to do it. Like ayo, maayadaan law, pwede ba And you you have a discussion. Di lang maglabay, you know. Okay. You just have to, you know, communicate with the, with the locals. But we taught ourselves and we immersed ourselves in their culture, which was very helpful. And eventually we are, you know, we, 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 we with that experience, um, we shared it also to the next generations. It takes perhaps a mountaineer to relate, you know, what experience you, you gain from hiking. For me, it was more of a spiritual journey. I was enveloped in a very rich foliage of forests with the sound of uh, birds and it was a beautiful sight and it was a journey, it was like a, a solo reunion or a solo retreat with, with my Lord and I spoke with him the whole time I was climbing so it was more spiritual for me and after the experience I, I remember um, telling myself I'll have to do it again. I decided to shift into full-time being a mountaineer. And um, after a couple of years exploring mountains and going outdoors, I felt the need to build a, a business uh, of outdoor equipment. I would remember in our younger days, um, college after college, we would go to Cebu, we'd go to Manila just to purchase equipment, backpacks, uh, uh, climbing shoes, stoves, and sometimes we would go out of the country just to buy equipment and we decided because there are people can you buy for me and we decided to why not you know buy a couple maybe a dozen of um, maybe a stove or a backpack and we would sell it in Cagayan de Oro and we decided to you know create a business together with my friends so we can address that need. The Viajero Outdoor Center is a Mindanao based retail store uh, specializing in outdoor recreational equipment. So when I say outdoor recreational equipment for sports, we talk about hiking, camping, uh, caving, rock climbing, paddling, and all sorts of outdoor activities. The word viajero comes from the Spanish word travel. And so we are actually promoting responsible travel here. And we make sure that people who travel are equipped with the proper equipment and very much aware of what's going on in the environment so they may properly um, engage you know, the, right, uh, the right people as well. There are two components of the business. That's the retail, where we get the source of income from, mostly from the equipment that we sell. And the other component is a service component. All right, so let's go inside. Okay, so welcome. This is our small store. It's lots of colors. Lots of shades. Uh, here we sell all sorts of uh, outdoor equipment, from apparels to technical equipment. And uh, this is like a, you know, a, 
a paradise siguro for an outdoor enthusiast. No? So many things to see here, small things. We have a uh, supplier from Manila, Cebu, and here in Misamis Oriental also. Well, we need to support local, okay? so the economy will grow locally as well. No? And then we want to support also ka ng mga um, young mga entrepreneurs. And there's a lot here. More importantly sa ako, it's really the economy, no? the local economy that, that grows and spurts more than imported products as we have to buy it from them. Like example, I'll show you something. Um, this apparel, no? this is an apparel that's made locally, I mean, lo locally Philippine made. And uh, an imported pants like this one probably will cost about 6000 to 5000 but here it just cost 1000 and the materials are basically the same. The stitching is basically the same, nothing much. It's just the brand. Because the brand really um, spends on marketing and research. So that's a lot. No? So that's why it's price higher. One of the things that I like about the business as Vihero is the community that we built, we created. I remember at the very start of the business, the community was a bunch of uh, students in Xavier University uh, wanting to belong to a group and wanting to experience uh, life outside school. Eventually, this community grew and they, become, they became professionals. And now they are doing what they love to do in many different facets of life and they have imbibed the discipline, the, you know, the passion for the environment because of that. We will never reach this far if not for this community because they're, so, they're the ones spreading you know, the advocacy, the passion. You go to Viero, they can teach you, you know, they can um, support you, they can network, they can connect you with these people. So it's the connectivity. All right, so the person in charge here is Frank. Oh, oh he's the frontliner. This is Frank. All our staff here are mountaineers. So Frank's recent climb is Mount Kalatungan, Kalatungan just about two months ago. So he's a member of uh, Xavier University Ateneo Mountaineering Society. And he takes care of all the online inquiries. He takes Shopee. care of Shopee <laughs> because we also have the e-commerce now. And the, the most important person here is Jen. Uh oh, see Eric and Serena, we cannot do this without Jen. <laughs> Jen is like the the office person, the finance person, and the person who knows all the secrets. <laughs> all right, so this is it. This is Viejero Outer Center, and it's very small, but it has everything uh, you need. We have the equipment, we have the trainings, with the services we can offer. We can recommend you to the right people if you want to travel. Um, and we have food here as well. <laughs> and the other component is a service component. So in the service component, we have the team buildings, we have the trainings, we have the event organizing, and we have the ecotourism as well, or ecotours. One of the concepts no, of tourism that we really promote is ecotourism. Ecotourism is responsible travel to natural areas. When we talk about natural areas, this is a very sensitive issue because we are talking about biodiversity as well, no? And just uh, not just the environment, the local communities also. So we need to educate the people who go to these natural areas on the proper things to do. And one of the campaigns that we are pushing is the Leave No Trace campaign, that when you go to the outdoors in a natural area, make sure that you don't leave anything at all. The Hero Outdoor Center conducts different kinds of trainings, you know, outdoor education trainings. Uh, one of them is the Leave No Trace. Uh, it's a principle that is um, commonly used, uh, it's, it's used globally, you know, internationally, for natural pristine areas. So seven, uh, the Leave No Trace has seven principles, and basically it tells you the right way or the proper way to go into the forest, into the mangroves, into the ocean, or any natural sites. And basically, uh, the seven principles will teach you about you know, trash, how to handle trash, human wastes, and how to engage with the local communities. And these are principles that will uh, you know, come in really handy when you go in all sorts of natural areas. So we are now at the back area of the store of the Hero Auto Center. And tonight, we are conducting the Leave No Trace workshop. So as you can see in the arrow here, it's upstairs. This is done by uh, Leave No Trace 
uh, trainer. He's certified by LNT. His name is uh, Sato Raipon and he's uh, from Cebu City. All right, so let's go upstairs. This way, please. <laughs> this is now the Leave No Trace uh, Outdoor Ethics Workshop and we are discussing um, number two, you know, it's travel and camp on durable areas or surfaces. So what's gonna happen is, it's like a hot scotch uh, memory game, so they're, they're trying to distinguish which is a durable surface or not. Okay, so we have about 24 participants coming from different parts of uh, the Philippines, actually. And there's um, some guests from New Zealand or Australia. Pwede mo spread awareness after any workshop. Kay mas daghan, as I have said, mas daghan atong mahatagan o awareness, mas minimal atong impact sa outdoor. So ang libro tayo, sa kanyang gusto lang, how to minimize our outdoor impacts. Kaya kita mo, bisita biya ta sa bukid. Bisita ta sa outdoors, bisita sa dagat. Rock climbing, caving, any any outdoor sports, nagita environmental impact. You know, um, the forest contribution is a big issue for mountaineering, uh, especially now that there's a decline in the forest cover. And can you imagine the amount of biodiversity cramped in a small patch of forest, and the implications and the consequences of that? So we make sure that we educate our climbers and our outdoor enthusiasts whenever they go to the forest and the proper way to act and the proper way to conserve them. 90% sa mga basura nga nabilin sa bukid, unintentional. Wala na gituyo. Nga naman, ato na po na ma-explain later on sa dispose of waste properly. Kay una, trained naman tatanan, kay baon naman tanan, dili ta maglabay og basura. Pero nga nung kita mismo, nasigig ato sa bukid, dakin yung tagbasura makitaan. Tama mali. A long time ago, the motto was take nothing but pictures, kill nothing but time, and leave nothing but footprints. But that has changed already. So now we're doing it a leave no trace. You can't even leave your footprints if possible. The leave no trace workshop has really created a culture of a more conscientious outdoors person. You know? uh, they are more aware of the environment and the impact that they make, and it, which is very, very uh, beneficial for not just for them, but for the environment as well. I would like to introduce to you our most precious student. Hello. Uh, <laughs> si Tomas from Impasugong. Kamasugo. Oh. Kamasugsugo. Kung ano ang gabaton, kung gabaklay ka, gagastragol ka, usay walay dalan, kung ano ang magsugo ka. Di ba kamas, kay Morag Mukama? Ah, uh, ano, ano yun. Na-organize po na mong grupo. Gikan po pag-talk nila. Gikan na may ugoan ka ng adventure, adventure na. Pero dili pa yung anak ka plaster ba? pag lang mo sa ilang mga seminars dito na organize me. Tapos mas naka-empower pag yun mo yung mga. Pagka-teach sa kuhaan sa ako sa LN, LNT. So good ato na yung opportunities nga mga nisulod. Hantod sa nag-meet me ni Ma'am Reyna. Gatoon ko sa iya, like ga-observe ako. Example, sa pagdala sa tao, ana mo na yung pinaka ace yun sa tanan niya nga skill tapos siguro how sincere siya when it comes to teaching outdoor ethics o oh, kuan sustainability sa imong pangbuhaton pa you know uh, tinuod siguro no uh, in a sense nga every time na ami lecture for example on a technical subject yes amo gyud siya sudlan nga mm. the why and the how mm. so ang personal experience na mo dayon mo, mo merge uh. na dayon siya ba? Sa tribo, ang kinayaan, mo na ang eskwelahan, simbahan, pharmacy, playgrounds, etc. So, common sense ra gid kayo nga ato yung ampingan ang kinayaan. I think that is one of the thrusts of the Hero Auto Center. Um, hoping and wanting everybody to go to the outdoors, to stimulate their passion for the outdoors. Because some people, they don't believe what they don't see. And we really want them to see what's happening in our forest now, and in our remaining forest in the Philippines. Vihero Auto Center has a program also. Uh, it's called Beyond TV program. It's a program designed for children. 
um, it started in 2015, uh, developed with a couple of really close friends. And the purpose really is for children, you know, for the children to bring them to the outdoors, to be able to uh, you know, uh, expose them to the environment and make them future leaders. Uh, because they're the leaders who will be deciding for our future, making sure that they're grounded and they have the foundation for environments. I had a short research about the forests in the Philippines and it, according to the United Nations no, um, under Food and Agriculture Organization, they said that um, we only have roughly 7 million hectares of forested land and that that's about it, right? So what do we do about that? It's a natural resource, it's a natural gift, and part of which is to really conserve it. So we go back to um, educating the youth, basically because they are the future of our, of the world. So in Beyond TV, that is um, a nature-based um, program no, for the children. Um, it gives activities for the children in terms of the outdoors. Um, that is to inspire them to really um, take care of the outdoors and the very classroom or the environment is the outdoors so um, we see that the children are able to go about with activities like trekking, caving and stuff like those, even camping. I am very afraid that my children will not be able to see the same forest, the same mountain that I saw in the past years and in the years to come. But I'm hopeful, no? I'm very hopeful for the future especially with the, uh, the collaboration of everybody in this planet for the conservation of forests. I remember in the early stage of uh, the business, we were actually doing the right thing, but we were just not aware of it. Like we were making sure that we make a profit, but helping out the communities and helping out you know, environment, even individuals grow. I think now people are really gearing towards uh, a company with a purpose and they would rather spend uh, more money for a company who has a purpose rather than just because it's nice or it's cheap. Some business owners might think that going green is impossible, uh, expensive, and uh, perhaps difficult. But what I can answer to that, it's, it's just a matter of commitment. In what you really want to believe in and what you believe in, perhaps it's um, expensive, but definitely not difficult. If you're a business owner um, on that specific industry, you have to research and find a commitment to where you can go green because you can always start in little steps. A business has to transition to sustainability because it's already a global concern. It's not something that's made up, that scientists uh, just made up for economic reasons. It's because it's urgent. You know, we need to practice sustainability in all aspects of life. Well, a business has to consider sustainability since it's already a, a global call. You know, that everybody, everyone in this uh, world has to be has to practice sustainability. Uh, we all know sustainability has three pillars like uh, economics and the environment, as well as a social you know, perspective. Because if you just think for profit. Um, I think there will be an imbalance. You know? um, eventually, if you only think about profit, uh, human resources will suffer, perhaps community will suffer, or perhaps your local, you know, your local lo locality will also suffer. So there has to be a balance uh, with all three pillars, which is uh, making sure that you make enough money to be able to push the things that you need to push. We cannot uh, do or conserve the forest alone. We need everybody to participate in this. And I'm calling for the business sector especially to you know, contribute and do your research in, on which aspect you can contribute to the environment. And I'm sure there's always one or two for every business out there. I think there are many lessons uh, in our journey, in the 27 years of journey, but if I am to pick one, the valuable lesson, I think it's um, the need for a community to be able to pursue your advocacies, your passion, and the need to change our world together. If I, if I have to do it by myself or just be an Eric, it would be hard. But with a bigger community, we can work together to reach that goal and faster. We should prioritize forest conservation because there's very little left. Can you imagine that? Um, there's very little left and we need to sustain the life of everybody in this world. 
Viharo Auto Center has been um, existing for 27 years already. And we envision forever <laughs> for, for Viharo. But we have been an icon already for so many um, outdoor enthusiasts out there uh, in the country for that matter. And we want to continue, no? we, we want to continue our advocacy, our passion uh, to share and to um, be able to serve uh, everybody who needs our help. It's a calling that, um, that we can never say no to.